Hello friends, so here is another question on full wave rectifier circuit. So here the question says that a full wave rectifier it uses two silicon diodes with a forward resistance of 20 ohm and a DC voltmeter is connected across a load of 1 kilo ohm and it gives us a value it reads the reading of the DC voltmeter is 55.4 ohm. Calculate the RMS value of current, the DC value of current, the RMS, DC maximum value of voltage and the ripple factor. So this is a very good question. See, here there has not, you know it is not mentioned that it is a center tap full wave rectifier but see here it is given two silicon diodes and the circuit diagram was not given so you have to draw it so you have to first draw the center tab rectifier circuit full wave rectifier circuit as it is then a DC voltmeter is connected across the load okay there is no information about the value of the supply voltage the RMS or anything about that or the turns ratio it is not given but still we will solve it okay so first we'll simply copy the diagram here okay so here it is given that this reading okay across the 1 kilo ohm load resistor is equal to 55.4 volt this is the DC voltmeter reading VDC subscript VM will write it so now this current which is flowing through the load resistor 1 kilo ohm load resistor okay IDC okay in this direction because it will conduct in this direction like this okay current will flow like this so here this IDC is equal to VDC VM that is the voltmeter reading divided by the load resistance is equal to 55.4 volt by 1 kilo ohm that is equal to 55.4 milliampere okay this is the DC current flowing through the load okay that next we know that IDC is equal to 2 I max by pi that implies I max is equal to IDC into pi by 2 that is equal to 55.4 into pi by 2 this much milliampere that is equal to it is coming around 86.978 milliampere 6.978 milliampere this is the maximum value of the current next is the RMS value RMS value we all know the formula for full wave rectification it is I max by root 2 which is equal to 86.978 by root 2 milliampere and that is coming around it is 61.5 milliampere so IRMS is equal to 61.5 milliampere so we have determined the DC maximum and RMS values of the current next is VRMS VDC and Vmax okay for that Okay, first let us determine the ripple factor because uh, we have the RMS and DC values with us. So, ripple factor can be easily determined. Okay, ripple factor formula we all know. It is equal to root over of I RMS by IDC whole square minus 1. 
so here IRMS is 61.5 milliampere milliampere will get cancelled IDC is equal to 55.4 whole square minus 1 root over that is coming around 0 0.482 0 0.482 okay so you have determined the uh, IRMS IDC IMAX and ripple factor now VRMS VDC and VMAX for that just focus here okay so here uh, let me redraw the circuit again okay this is starting from the secondary winding center tap point of the secondary winding this is the center tap point okay this then we have the diode which has a forward resistance of 20 ohm in during the con conducting state so let us assume the diode is conducting and it has a forward resistance of 20 ohm okay rf is equal to 20 ohm then we have a load resistance here 1 kilo ohm with a voltage value of 55.4 volt 55.4 volt okay this which is equal to VDC voltmeter reading this then we have here you know in center tapped the secondary winding voltage gets divided and let's say this is the center tapped voltage okay this is DC value this is the current IDC which is flowing IDC which is equal to how much 55.4 milliampere we calculated so let us assume this is the DC value of the center tap point voltage okay so if here we apply KVL okay if we apply KVL here in this way like this this is the KVL path if we apply KVL here it will be like this VCTP DC value center tap point voltage DC value minus IDC into RF minus the voltmeter reading voltage that equals to 0 that implies VCTP DC here this value is equal to IDC which is 55.4 into 10 to the power minus 3 milliampere into 20 ohm minus VDC VM which is minus 55 0.4 that is equal to 0 that implies VCTP DC is equal to 55.4 plus 55.4 into 10 power minus 3 into 20 that is coming around total which is 56.508 volt that is the DC value of the center tap point voltage now we know that VDC is equal to 2V max by pi that implies here the DC value of the center tapped voltage is equal to the maximum value of the center tapped voltage by pi that implies VCTP max that is the maximum value of the center tapped point voltage is equal to 56.508 into pi by 2 that is equal to 88.717 which is the maximum value okay this 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 is the DC value here which we calculated which is equal to VDC and VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2 that is Vmax by root 2 which is equal to 88.717 divided by root 2 which is coming around 88.71 just one minute
88.717 divided by root 2 that is equal to 62 point rounding it off 62.74 volts 62.74 volts which is equal to the RMS value this okay this so a very good question here uh, what happens some of the times uh, by mistake what people do or what students do they here to determine IDC what they do they do it like this VDC VM by RF plus RL no it is not that because here the voltmeter is connected only across the 1 kilo ohm resistor that reading is 55.4 volt so we have to only take into consideration this load resistor only don't do it RF plus RL no it is wrong here if you do it like this the answer will be wrong ok only VDC VM that is the voltmeter reading which is the voltage across the load resistor divided by the load resistance itself that will give you the value of the DC current flowing through it and then after that you can determine the other parameters ok using the basic formulas ok the value at DC value maximum value RMS value same goes here we apply the KVL here is another interesting concept we got the DC values then we have to only use the DC values only here I have you know deliberately have written here VCTP DC ok the DC value of the center tap point voltage ok only the DC values DC currents they are used here the DC voltmeter reading that is that value is used when you are dealing with DC values you have to use DC values of all the parameters when you are using RMS values you have to use RMS values of all the parameters when you are using maximum values you have to use the maximum values of all the parameters ok if I would have used maximum I would have written here VCTP max I would have determined the maximum value of this DC voltmeter reading maximum current flowing through it I would have used all the maximum parameters ok so like that always use similar parameters so here is uh, another question which we have solved ok so friends I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much